country is on holidays but the world does not know any holiday and that's why I am here this morning to be a blessing to you on fruitful season. Gabe Nkenang is my name, the privileged general overseer of World Tabernacle Worldwide. I am bringing you uh, uh, a breakfast served hot from heaven's oven, but not before we pray together. Heavenly Father, we look up to you. You are our help in the years past and our help even in the years to be blessed via this program. I curse every distraction. I take away every hindrance. I pray that the rim of the world will jump at my listeners and viewers to the intent that the people will be blessed and God will be glorified and satisfaction will be mine that I am able to touch lives across the globe. Unto you alone, Lord, be glory both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. I'm bringing you a message entitled, The Gods Are Not to Blame. The Gods Are Not to Blame. Taking my scripture from Exodus chapter 32, verse 4. That's Exodus chapter 32, verse 4, which reads, And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, This be thy God, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Please mark the word, This be the gods. This be thy gods. The gods are not to blame. Well, the um, story of how Aaron manufactured a golden calf for the children of Israel to worship in the absence of their leader Moses is known by all and sundry. Of course, um, this singular idolatry I call it unwarranted idolatry, brought untold hardship and dire negative consequences upon the children of God, which included such things as divine wrath. You can see that in verse 10 of our text, it brought divine wrath and it also brought nakedness. That is to say, the coverage of the Almighty upon their lives was taken away. You can see that in verse 25. And of course, it brought untold plagues upon the people of God, as you can see in verse 35, one would begin to wonder who should be blamed um, for the plagues these people had, for the unfortunate situations these people found themselves in. One begins to wonder who should actually take the blame. That's why I'm here this morning to let you know that the gods were not to be blamed the God, the golden calf they set up was not responsible for their malady. Reason being that the God did not make itself. The golden calf did not create itself. It was manufactured by Aaron. So if you ask me, Aaron was to take the blame, not the gods. 
And of course, it, it, you know, if you see, if you look at verse 4, you will see that Aaron was the manufacturer. He was the one who did the industrialization, manufacturing a God. So he was to be blamed. The people too, if you see from verses 1 to 3, you will discover that they should be blamed for providing the raw materials for the manufacturing of this God. What a God. God forbid that I should worship a God that I was around when it was manufactured. Manufactured so, from some, some um, you know, raw materials. The God I serve is not manufactured by anybody. It has no beginning. It has no end. That's, that's a message for another day. But I want you to know that the gods were not to be blamed for all the negative things the children of Israel went through because of that idolatry. But the people and Aaron is supposed to be blamed. Before you begin to descend on Aaron and his people for this unwarranted idolatry, I want you to know that today there are people who are still blaming Satan, blaming the devil, blaming ancestral spirits, blaming generational forces and curses, blaming all sorts of things for what they are going through. When actually, if you probe deeper, you will discover that even the devil does not know anything about what they are going through. How I wish Satan was able to talk. I mean, he would have shouted very loud, you know, and defended himself in most of the things people attribute to him that he knows next to nothing about. And I want to ask you, brother, sister, Mother, father, uncle, who are you blaming for you are not being saved? Are you blaming the devil? No. You can't blame the gods of the land. You can't blame the gods of your family because in this season you've been exposed to the word of God, to the raw, complete word of God. You have been exposed to undiluted word of God like I preach and like some other sincere men of God preach. What stops you from getting saved? What stops you from answering that altar call? What stops you from saying yes to Jesus Christ? See, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord, I beg of you this moment, stop blaming the devil and receive Jesus Christ into your life. Receive his life into your life and begin to live as a child of God because you see when you go to hell or when you stand in judgment, you will never tell God, oh, it was somebody that stopped you. It was the devil that stopped you. It was ancestral spirit that stopped you from giving your life to Jesus. You know, you are a free moral agent, so you have the right to say yes to Jesus, and you also have the right to say no. You have the right to prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ by living right here on earth, by, by having a relationship, a cordial relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. And you also have the right to say no to the Lord and go your way and live your own way. You have the right and God will never impose himself upon you. So the devil is not to be blamed. The gods of your family are not to blame if you go to hell because there is enough word to help you escape hell and make heaven and live a, a, a good life, live a satisfactory life here on planet earth earth. See, some people blame their parents for persecuting them, blame their friends, blame their siblings, and so on and so forth for persecuting them. And that is why they dropped from Christianity. And that is why they had to backslide because the pressure was too much. Sir, God will never accept any excuse if you go to hell. I pray for you that you do not go to hell. I pray for you that as I speak to you right now, you will break down in your heart and 
and ask Jesus to come into your life and confess him as Lord and Savior and make him your friend and your master in the name of Jesus. I pray that, that you will come under conviction of your sins and that you will be gracious enough to let Jesus Christ into your life because the gods will not be blamed on the day of judgment. You know, some people blame the gods for their sickness. They blame witches and wizards. When actually, if you look at their eating habits, you will discover that they, they even deserve to be more sick than they are now. And so, brother, sister, mother, father, friend, who do you blame for your ill health? Have you looked inwards? Are you eating the right things? Are you eating the right, uh, you know, the right way? Are you eating the right diet? Because, you know, the difference between diet and dye is the tea. If you remove the tea, what remains is dye. So some things that we call diet, you know, that we're enjoying life. Sir, if you take away the tea, you, it will make people die. So have you looked at your eating habit? Have you looked at the way you're taking care of yourself? Maybe you feel sick and instead of going to the hospital, going to the right medical center, you're, you're trying to do what is called self-medication and so on and trying to patronize quack doctors. Please do not kill yourself and then people will begin to blame the devil. Take good care of your health. Rest sufficiently, you know. Take good care of your health before you begin to blame the witches and the wizards for what you are going through. There are people who are poor not because Satan has you know made them poor it is because some of them are not working as I talk to you right now I know you're looking for a breakthrough I know you you're you're believing God for open heavens you want God to bless you but I came to ask you are you willing to work there are people who are not simply willing to work oh thank God for starch on white clothes and then you will put it on and then lift your shoulders and walk around and then you will expect those who are working hard to part with their hard-earned money to you and if they don't give to you you begin to call them names including the fact that they are stingy they are super glue hands and and so on and so forth nobody is a father christmas sir stop worrying people stop bothering people because you know everyone have their own financial challenge You've got to work because favor is likely to meet you on your place, in your place of labor. So you've got to be willing to work because if you're willing to work, God will give you work. If you're not willing to work, God cannot help you. You can blame the devil for all I care, but Satan is saying in his heart, I have no business with his poverty. So you've got to arise and do something. If you're serving somebody, serve him well because that is a seed for your future so that when you stand on your own, God will also give you people who will also serve you well. So if you're poor, stop blaming the devil. Look for something to do. If you are going to school, please do that properly. Don't blame your failure on the teacher, on the lecturer, on, you know, witches and wizards and the paths of darkness. While others are digging it out at night, burning the midnight candle, I want to ask you, what do you, do you usually do? Are you not sleeping and snoring and you, 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 you expect to just wake up the following morning and perform wonders in exams? God does not perform magic. God performs miracles. So you need to be able to pay the price because you cannot, like I used to say, you cannot sleep on Delilah's bosom and wake up and expect to wake up in Abraham's bosom. Can I rewind that? You cannot sleep on Delilah's bosom or laps and expect 
to wake up in Abra Abraham's bosom. So you can't be sleeping all through the night and then you wake up the following morning and uh, pray in tongues and go into exams hall and think that God will work magic. No, sir, you've got to do something. You've got to contribute to your success. I came to let you know that you can be successful in this life. Stop blaming the devil for what he knows nothing about. Stop blaming the devil for the death of some people. If you look at the death of some people, you will discover that Satan has no hand in it. People die by accident. And if you check, you'll discover that the condition of the car was not roadworthy. And they have accidents and die and people begin to blame mother, blame father, blame uncle, blame, you know, family head and so on and so forth. Have you checked the roadworthiness of that car be before you move? Have you used your seat belt? The seat belt is not just to beat traffic wardens. It is for your own good. Some drive while answering the answer calls while driving some drive and get drunk and at the end of the day everybody will blame the devil some i mean some people are not security conscious at all some of the deaths are avoidable how dare you go to somebody you you've not even met before a facebook friend calls you to come over to a certain hotel somewhere and you're meeting for the first time and nobody knows your whereabouts and nobody you you nobody knows in any has any idea about who you're going to meet and where you're going and, the, and at the end of the day they keep announcing somebody wore this kind of cloth and left the house and has not returned since then and I ask who knew about the whereabouts of the person so you've got to be security conscious we know that angels are on assignment but you also have your duty to perform you've got to be security conscious so the gods are not to blame see if you fail in this life the gods are not to blame your family people are not to blame you are to blame you can take your destiny in your hand not only by having a relationship with God through his son Jesus Christ but also by taking the right initiatives in, you know initiatives by going out with the right set of people by doing what you need to do you have a responsibility you have the human side while God has his divine side and so beloved of God the reason I brought you this message today is to stop you from trying to blame people and trying to blame demons and trying to blame some gods of the family for your failure See, God did not create you to fail. You've got to make up your mind you're not going to fail in this life. There is a, a reason why God allowed you to be born in the first place and why God put you where he's putting you. He did not put you there to be a second class citizen. He did not put you there to just hold the ladder of success for others to, 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 to climb up. There is nothing wrong in holding ladder for people, but you can't do that forever. You've got to come to a point where you arise and become the essence of your creation and I came to release upon you the anointing it takes uh, to take you to your dream, dreamed destiny, to take you to where God originally wired you to be on this planet earth I came to prophesy to you you will never be a disappointment to God, you will never be a disappointment to your generation I want to tell somebody watching me via any platform form right now that the entire the entire generation your generation is waiting for your manifestation the manifestation of sons please do not disappoint your children your spouse your church and your fans and your friends they have very 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 high hopes in you and so you've got to arise and take your destiny in your hand in the name of Jesus when you do your part, God knows how to take care of the gods. God knows how to take care of the demons that, that are 
against your success. God knows what to do. But you've got to, you know, play your part. You can't be sitting down, doing nothing, and yet blaming the devil, blaming for people who don't like your face, blaming people who are working against, you know, you know, they're working against your destiny. No, sir. I came to prophesy upon you that even as you do your best in this season, no devil will be able to floor you. I prophesy upon you this glorious morning that no weapon ever fashioned against you shall prosper. But every tongue that rise up against you in judgment have been condemned. I prophesy over you that a thousand shall fall at your side and a thousand at your right hand side. They shall never be able to come close to your dwelling place because he that is in you is far better than he that is in the world. I prophesy that they will from today come in one way but they will flee in seven ways because the Lord God Almighty has destined you to succeed seed and you can never afford to fail. You can't fail because there are people whose destinies are closely tied to your destiny. There are people whose success is closely hinged around your success. If you fail, they fail. And so you need to succeed. You can't stand on one place. You can't be stagnant. You need to go forward so that another person coming behind you can take your place. You need to leave that one room and go to a flat because there's somebody who is waiting to take that one room. You need to move from that level, you know, to another level. You need to leave that house, honey, and go and marry because your younger, uh, your younger sibling wants to live in that, in that room. And so I came today to empower you from heaven. I know that some of you have determined. I know that some of you have tried, but the devil has vowed that they will not let you go. I came to prophesy that that devil is a liar. They can never stop you. If they had stopped you before, they can never stop you no more. Today is your day of freedom. Free to become what God wants you to be. Free to go to the next level in Jesus' mighty name. Today I came to commonize that God, that, that small g, small o, small g, small d. I came to come and I said, somebody listening to me, somebody watching me right now, I would like you to type, I commonize every God in my family. I commonize every God around me. I break every evil altar around me. I am free and free indeed. In the name of Jesus, I travel in the realm of the spirit and I break that altar in your family's compound that has been militating against you. I travel to where that evil camera is, where those monitoring devices are, you know, incensed against you. That even when you are very far from home, they're still monitoring your, your, your movement, monitoring the movement of your helpers, trying to stop your helpers from from actually helping you in the name of Jesus. I send the thunder of God from on high to destroy and dismantle those evil altars and those evil cameras in the mighty name of Jesus. Every CCTV camera of the devil is dismantled right now in Jesus' precious name wherever they had taken your photograph to. I neutralize it in the name of Jesus. Wherever they had taken the piece of your cloth, your money to, wherever they had taken anything from from your body, any underwear of yours too. In the name of Jesus, I send the angel, the warrior angels of God to fight the battles you cannot fight and to dismantle those forces. I bring back your blessings. I bring back the part of your body that had been taken. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm seeing a womb that has been tampered with in the realms of darkness. But in the name of Jesus, I restore that womb by the function of the anointing of fruitfulness that is upon my head. I speak to that womb to be healed, to be touched by the Almighty. Oh yes, there is a surgical, a divine surgical oppression going on 
on somebody's womb now in Jesus mighty name as I'm talking to you you'll know I'm talking to you because you're beginning to feel a rumbling inside your tummy God is doing something there is a movement glory be to God I'm seeing a child that has not been kicking for the past four and a half days as I speak to you that child is kicking that child is receiving life now in jesus name thou child receive life receive the life of god receive physical life receive biological life in jesus precious name i command that blood flow to cease you've been pregnant but you've been still seeing blood in the name that is above every other name not in my name but in the name of jesus christ of nazareth be healed that bleeding ceases right away in Jesus' most efficacious name. Somebody is watching me and your time of delivery had passed. As I talk, you are in your 11th month, almost going to the 12th month of the pregnancy instead of the normal nine months. In Jesus' name, everyone has told you that, everyone have told you that it is not a child, but I'm seeing a living child, a male child. And so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I begin to make a way for this child to begin to find its way out. I command your cervix to cooperate with this prayer. I command your cervix to open and I command favor to, to start. You call it labor, but we call it in our commission favor because you're not going to labor for a long time five minutes after this prayer a miracle is happening i'm waiting i'm waiting for your testimony please if you have any testimony from this program do not fail to send to us either via this platform or via the numbers you um, are seeing on the screen what's up or Text me and let me know what God has done in your life via fruitful season. Oh yes, I bless you in the name of the Father. I bless you in the name of the Son. I bless you in the name of the Holy Spirit. And I decree and declare you are blessed. That sickness will never kill you. You will live to testify the works of the Lord in your life. I'm seeing somebody who is coughing. You're profusely coughing and, and 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 then you are having this this acute pains as you cough you you are even coughing blood in jesus mighty name it ceases right now for everything that has a beginning must have an end even drugs have expiry date i command that sickness to expire in jesus mighty mighty name it is well with you both now and forevermore Amen, amen, and amen. I may not have mentioned your problem, but I declare that your prayers are answered in this season. Your requests are granted. Your heavens are opened. Your afflictions are taken away. Your expectations shall never be cut off. Be blessed forever. It is well with you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, the gods are commonized. Type it again. The gods are commonized. Evil altars are destroyed and dismantled. I am free forever to serve the Lord and to serve him forever. In Jesus' mighty name. This night in word number one day, we are meeting for covenant service. It's going to be awesome today and tomorrow. Midnight to about 2 a.m. Between 2 and 3 a.m. Please, I'd like you to come to work tabernacle and renew the covenant of life, of good health, and of wealth alongside with us. This coming Sunday, we will be having, you know, a relationship summit. We like families to be together because we know a good family is a good church. Please, in our second service from 9.30 a.m. to noon, I'd like you to come with your spouse and listen to a word that will keep your family together until Jesus comes. Until I come your way again, this is your brother and friend, the Jew of Word Tabernacle Worldwide, Soma Estate to you, saying to you, 
always stay glued to the atmosphere of God's word so you will be fruitful. Amen. I love you and I'm praying for you. Bye-bye. My Lord.